topics would we like to cover? And this is one of the topics that was suggested. That's the first reason. The second reason, of course, is that it's particularly relevant as a topic to our current situation, as in some places, schools are reopening, schools are thinking very seriously and very carefully about the impact of school closures and how best to organise programmes that will help learners to catch up. I'd like now to hand over to Hala. Very warm welcome, Hala. How are you doing? Hi, John. I'm doing okay, thank you. I hope you're well. And thanks for everybody who joins us today. Uh, and thanks for uh, my colleagues, Timora and Nora, for supporting the whole thing. Sorry, if I just, just before you move on to the, the next um, advice and toolkit, I just wanted to, the really interesting comment that's come in from Nadim. I'm sorry to interrupt you in, in full flow, but I, I think it's quite interesting. And I think it's, you know, it will, uh, uh, bring us back, but also inform what, what you're talking about now. Um, mm. He's drawn a, a very interesting parallel between um, the, the concept of, a, of a, a school without walls to uh, uh, the idea of a classroom that is beyond the textbook. And I think that's quite nice, mm. isn't it? Isn't that a nice way of looking at things? That, yeah, you know, exactly, you John. I, I wanted to say the same thing. Yeah, I like this comment. Thank you, Nadim. That's right. It's, yeah. I'm sorry. It's um, you know, it's 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 making the leap, isn't it? Because at one point we couldn't really have imagined um, teaching without a textbook, but of course um, we do that all the time, and that we dip into the textbook and use other kinds of resources in the face-to-face -face classroom. And I think it's 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 interesting, isn't it? We probably couldn't have imagined um, learning without that physical space, but we've done it. Exactly. For a long time now. Exactly. So the, the dreams are, are coming true now because of a pandemic. So we've been talking, I mean, if you, like two years ago, uh, one of the dreams of the uh, materials writers and the curriculum developers is to have a classroom beyond the textbook. And you know you can you can listen to teacher trainers talking about please leave the course book a little bit and create world to the learners beyond the course book and use supplementary materials and you know enrich the learners' experience. So all of these have been like dreams or something that was difficult to achieve, but now we're doing it. We're doing it because we're forced to do it because of the pandemic, but we're doing it. it, it, it it's, it's possible. It can happen. So thanks, Nadim, for your comment. It's very relevant really to what we're saying today. And you've got three different types of responses, condensed, accelerated, remedial, and we'll give practical examples on each of them in a moment. On the, uh, Hala, on the subject of those three different models, there have been lots of interesting comments coming in. I, I picked out one which I think is, is good, again from uh, Nadim. He says, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. We don't have to accelerate. Okay. Right? See the first bird well, then you can look for other birds. And I've understood from that that what he's saying is that, that it's important to establish good practices, establish something uh, concrete in terms of knowledge or skill. And I think that's what you mean by get it straight, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. I think I think Nadim, from what he's saying, tends to follow the remedial approach, like, you know, establish good practices, make sure everybody in the class gets it, they master it, they can handle it before you start looking at something new. And Nadim, you're very wise indeed. So we might have Ask Nadim series in the future. 